I'm an ambassador for Galaxy Zoo, uh, which in short is an online astronomy project set up by real astronomers. Now, you don't need to be an astronomer to be involved in this. I'm not an astronomer, um, but I just accidentally discovered something on this website, which is uh, what led me here. Uh, in everyday life, I'm actually a biology teacher at the Sita Verde College in Heerlen, um, and music is one of my passions. This was during our open stage night. Um, and I also go out to tell people uh, how they can be involved in this project. Um, so to explain Galaxy Zoo, I'll start close to home, which you can see in the next picture, uh, the top left. And in the top right, our home is now the little black dot the arrow is pointing at. Um, the big ball is the sun, put to scale. So together with these other planets, we form the solar system, and the solar system can be found in a galaxy, which you'll see in the next picture. Uh, there is a, a yellow arrow pointing at a dot, which could be a sun now, so we'll keep zooming out. And if that didn't blow your mind yet, there are billions of these galaxies in our universe. And you can see some of them on the right. And this is where Galaxy Zoo comes in. Um, the astronomers, they had about a million pictures of the universe, and they were automatically taken um, with this telescope, the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Um, and the astronomers needed to know about the shapes of the galaxies. But nobody had seen these pictures before, and a million is a lot. So they thought, we'll put them online together with a short tutorial, and we'll just ask the public to help us classify them, which is what they did. Uh, and you can still log on. This is what it looks like. Uh, you get one of these beautiful images on your screen, and you click the button on the right when you're logged in. Just choose the button that best represents the shape of the galaxy. That's all there is to it. Everybody can do this. You don't need to be a scientist, but you are actually helping uh, research. So by now you might wonder how I ended up doing this, um, which is through Brian May, Queen's guitarist, um, but also astrophysicist. And Galaxy Zoo is actually an idea of a friend of his, Chris Lintot. So Brian mentioned it on his website, which is where I found out about it. And um, I thought it sounded cool, so I signed up. And now people often ask me, does Brian know that you discovered this thing? Uh, and I can tell you he does. Um, we actually appear in his new book, The Cosmic Tourist, and uh, that came out recently. So um, we think that's kind of a nice closure to the story. Um, so what is it? Honey's Volve. Um, next I'll show you the first picture I got of it on my screen. And of course my task was to classify the galaxy in the middle. Um, but then I was wondering about this blue smudge in the picture. So I sent Chris an email saying, what's this blue smudge in my picture? But he didn't know either. Uh, and I still didn't think I discovered something. I was just curious and I wanted an answer. So um, they did some investigations and one of the things we found out is that it was actually green, um, among things. Um, other telescopes were involved, even the Hubble Space Telescope. Um, and they started calling it Honey's Vorwerp. Vorwerp being the slightly boring Dutch word for object. Um, but it stuck, and now it's the official, official international name for it. So if I'm doing an interview in England, I'm also talking about a Vorwerp. Um, we did do some press, and that's fun. It's a nice experience. But I think the best part is when people reply to me saying it, this story inspired them uh, to indeed log on or to um, start a course in astronomy even. I learned a lot myself as well because they invited me on the teams to investigate this thing as a not astronomer. Um, but now I'm officially a co-author on these papers. That's quite interesting. Um, so they called it a quasar light echo. On the left you see the paper from Galaxy Zoo, by the way, and on the right from Astron in the Netherlands. Um, they've explained to me what it is. I'll come back to that later. A few short facts. It's a galaxy-sized gas cloud, so it's huge. There are only a few young stars in there, and it's very bright and hot. And the other thing, it's about 650 million light years from Earth, which to me just means it's very, very, very far away. The cool thing is it can teach us about the life cycle of supermassive black holes, the light echo theory, and this is how it works. Um, if you look at the center of the galaxy next to it, you can't see um, the black hole. And once upon a time, there was all this gas, which you couldn't see either. But then the black hole lit up the stuff that's now known as Honey's Forework. So if you look at that, you're basically looking back at history. Honey's Vorwerb is literally one in a million, um, but we did find a few little 
four-word pièce. Um, they're actually called four-word pièce because there are smaller versions of it. Uh, they're in sight galaxies. You can see here they're blue again. Um, I didn't make up the name, but I do think it's quite funny here. So because it's a unique story, uh, a couple of people in America, scientists and artists, they um, turned it into a comic book. It's called Honey and the Mystery of the Full Web. <laughs> so that's me, and uh, you, we also explain what we uh, found out and how we did that, so it's very e educational too. Um, Honey's Vorwerp is quite unique, but it's not the only thing we discovered on Galaxy Zoo. We found out there is actually peas in space, um, which turned out to be a whole new class of object as well. We did know about the overlapping galaxies, and uh, below you can see blue elliptical, but with Galaxy Zoo we found uh, lots more of the ones that we already knew. Um, so Galaxy Zoo turned into a huge success. Um, it actually grew into the Zooniverse, which is kind of a mother project to different projects. For instance, we have, besides Galaxy Zoo, we have Moon Zoo, which focuses on the moon. We have Solar Stormwatch, our Planet Hunters, but also other sciences, like biology ones. We have a climate science project called Old Welder. Uh, we have Whale of M, which focuses on sounds of these animals, really cool. Um, so if you are a scientist and you have an idea for a project uh, for which you'd need citizen scientists like me, uh, you can contact the Citizen Science Alliance and you, know, you might work with them. If you are like me, however, and like these other people and you would just you know, like to help these scientists, uh, you can just log on on zooniverse.org. And if you have any questions about any of this, you can find me at honeysforwerp.org. <laughs> Thank you.